you'll say so. See? Okay. See? The meeting is now live. Recording is in progress. So we're all set to go, folks. There we are. Hello. How are you? This is our uh, our uh, live on Facebook and uh, live uh, recording, and we're going to put this up later. Let me just make sure everything is... Uh, is out there and working and let me see here see so, yeah, i go over my computer and i just look to see and there we are okay see okay and uh it's a little warm in here so i turned on the air conditioner which you can probably hear in the background and lionel let me admit the people that are here already rick sheckman mike chisholm steve bender uh, Edward Berger, uh, Scott Boddicker, Charlie Wallace. Wow, we're off to a raging, raging start. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. I'm good. Uh, good. Uh, and uh, I uh, want to say hello to all of you and uh, welcome you. I'm just turning a few things up and down here. Hello to Rick Sheckman, who just sent me a note about uh, SAG AFTRA. Um, they had a hearing today before a judge uh, there was a there was a, uh, a summary judgment they wanted a summary judgment on dismissing the case and the judge would not go along with it so we're i, I watched the thing by the way shecky on zoom uh watching anything that goes on in a courtroom is pretty goddamn boring <laughs> you know? uh, and this was no exception uh, but since I had a personal stake in it, the thing is, this suit is Ed Asner at all. Uh, and Ed Asner, of course, died yesterday. Uh, and uh, so I guess it's just left. How, how does that, you know how that works at all, Rick? No. No. I guess he, he it's still Ed I Asner. I guess it's a class action suit of some sort. Yeah. So I it mean, it seems pretty clear someone rubbed them out so they would have to not, uh, not have the case. <laughs> yeah, it's very obvious. Yeah. Uh, boy, that was a surprise, though. It didn't even list a, a, a means of death. Supposedly, what you said two weeks ago, Shecky, he was doing natural a, causes, natural causes. But two weeks ago, he was doing four a weeks here. ago. He was doing a play here in New York. Uh, no, in Los Angeles, in Los Angeles. OK. And um, yeah, I guess he was doing it from a wheelchair because he, he had walking problems. I don't know that, but it was him and Ruta Lee in a play called Another Gin Game. Wow. And what was the play? Do you know? Not really, but I know they carried their scripts. They carried their scripts. Okay. It's one of those things where, uh, you know, uh, where they read from a script. Uh, but it, it, it still, I mean, you wouldn't think that he, then he died. Well, he had he had lunch with my friend Stu Showstack two weeks ago with Dick Van Dyke and a few other people. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I I guess you know it's it's what we call natural causes. And I mean, he huh? went out, I guess, having a good time. Apparently, apparently. So, anyway. So how are done, he had done a video endorsement for a friend of mine's first book and had agreed to video endor do another video endorsement. He's launching the book tomorrow and he died before he could do it. Oh, so. Okay. So I guess nobody was expecting him to die. I mean, oh. it's just he died. Other than being 91, yeah. you know. <laughs> but he was on my dead list, my dead pool. He was on your dead pool? No. You know, you would lose on that. Because you only get you only get a point for every year before nine. what a hundred. Yeah, nine points. Yeah. So you would have only got nine points on that one. Now, if you go for uh, say a Donald Trump, you'll get like twenty two points. We and, could hope, huh? We could hope. We could hope, but get way more than twenty. In, in a dead way more than twenty two. If you Ron Donald Trump dies, we get way more profit yeah. from that. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't do very well on Charlie Watts, you know. Um, <laughs> But you well, would, that'd be 20 points. He was 80. He was 80, but that'd be 20 points. But that's still not a lot. You, where you make your real points is if you pick a rock star who overdosed. No, it's that actor yeah. who I never heard of who died at 17 the other day. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the big calling the, the home run shot is asking who's going to be the next to join the 27 club. Who's going to? 
Because if you can figure that out, then you got a lot of points there. The next 27 club? What is that? The 27 club? Rockers. No. Every every rock star that's died is 27, right? Hend yeah. Hendrix, Hendrix, Cobain, Amy Winehouse. Oh, yeah. They all died at 27? Yeah. 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 Well, I should be nervous. My 27th birthday is coming up. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 27. That's interesting. Yeah, all of them. You know? Oh. I mean, that's really interesting. Uh, I don't completely understand that. You know, but uh, what the hell? A young age to achieve that kind of success and notoriety. Yeah. Well, today, you know, people feel they're a failure if they haven't made it by 20. Right. Oh. You know, I mean, in the old days, we used to have people who made it, oh, by the time they were 30, and that was considered young. Uh, but now they have all this instant success, and they don't know how to handle it. I don't think I would. Would you, any of us know how to handle that kind of success if it suddenly came our way at 18, 19, 20? I did I fine. That. We laugh at that all the time. There are these 24 year old in influencers, right? Yeah. They've lived their life. They haven't gone through anything. And what wisdom do they have to impart to others? Yet they call themselves an influencer. Right. Exactly. So, well, they, you know, they use their social media to influence stupid things that we don't give a flying shit about. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But Mandy, then they turn Mandy's with, with his life, by the way. Like, huh? oh, you're trying to live a happy life when they haven't lived any life, right? Like, saying a product is great a hairspray or whatever that's one thing but if you haven't lived any life how can you how can you tell somebody how to live a good life i don't know well uh, uh, i'm trying to think are there any real people who made it young that survived that without some kind of trauma for a while at least oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are the, 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 the one thing we're, we're not good at that they're so good at is finding righteous indignation for no reason right <laughs> and then becoming famous for it. I there there's a new a new show I watched on on Netflix called I think The Chair mm -hmm. with Sandra O oh as the chair of the English yeah, I department. One episode. Too, it's too true. It's too it's, true for me. Yeah, it's 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 really bad. But it's it, these kids all go to school and and they're they basically the premise is that the 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 rats get to rule the ship. <laughs> That's it's, on the truth. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the truth of education today. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it, one one guy makes an off color joke and all of a sudden he's a Nazi. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I haven't watched. I watched one episode of The Chair, uh, and I probably should watch more. But uh, yeah. I watched three. It's okay. Nothing. Okay. There's only six, and they're the show clickbait's you know, you know actually I, pretty good. You know what I've currently watched over thirty episodes of. I'm I'm almost through with the, the third season of it. Uh, and it, it, the good life. Anybody watch the good life? Oh, excuse me. No. The good, the good, good place. place. Good place. Oh, my wife and I watch it right now. We're I watched that all the way through when it was on. Yeah, good place is great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I found that it was great. The first season was terrific. Yeah. The second season, yeah, a lot as good as the first season. Third season, I began to wonder whether it wasn't losing everything. And then it, it kind of picked up. You know, it finally got you going where it was going because it becomes a totally different show as it, as it evolves. Um, but I, uh, I, I think the, it allowed itself to parody just about everything. And if you want to talk about righteous indignation, <laughs> that show is just full of it. You know, uh, the library is presented by GoDaddy. The school is named Grand uh, MGM Grand High School. You know, uh, I, I did, there are a lot of in jokes there that are very, very funny. So I had a twenty-something get mad at me because I said about someone, I think he's a good dude. I didn't know that the word "dude" is now offensive. <laughs> oh God! Is, it really? is "dude" offensive now? I. I well, you're, I, I, you're assuming you're making gender assumptions, Andrew. I was, I was, and not only that, there's some history about dudes are are country people making fun of folks that don't have the country lifestyle and come out to it, and and it's offensive to people out, you know. That is, I got a whole, I got an earful, and my response was, "That's so interesting," because I couldn't care less, dude. And I, <laughs> I, I <laughs> okay, boomer. Yeah, yeah, I love it when they call me Boomer because I'm not. <laughs> Do we have to cancel the Big Lebowski now? Yeah, dude. 
<laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I guess dude ranches are. are... I, I watch old shows now and I go, wow, they wouldn't get away with any of that today. Would, would Jack Benny been allowed to have Rochester as his sidekick? No. No, let's ask the cast of Blazing Saddles. <laughs> but certain people get a pass like it's so funny how quentin tarantino is still you know revered no, by even not if you not if you look at twitter man there's oh no no, no. all right well fair enough but but there but are what, what, what are they I, on I him submit that at least he's divisive huh? with that group i would submit that he's still at least divisive and there's a certain percentage of that group that is divided that still Loves, loves, loves. And I mean, his, his well, if you face. don't like Quentin Tarantino, don't watch his goddamn movie. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, you wait, have wait, a choice. Hold on a second. What, what is going on with Quentin Tarantino? Well, he uses what? the N word a lot in his movies, it, when it, and it was appropriate. And it's Samuel L. Jackson approves. That's good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, he uses it in uh, in in uh, in that what was that slave movie he did? Uh, Dang. Django and Django Unchained, or whatever. Django Unchained, because that's what they called them back then. Yeah. yeah, but Pulp Fiction uses it almost as much. And he uses it. Remember, there's that great scene where they're dropping the body at you know his house, and he's like, "Do you see a sign that says dead N-word storage?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but on the other hand, when he uses the word, it's usually coming out of the mouth of a black actor. No, he that was him. He plays he, that role. He he, he was oh. saying it. Oh, okay, all right. Well, but who cares? Who don't cares? If watch, don't watch the movie. Oh, don't watch this movie. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, I hate what they've done to Woody Allen. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? I mean, goes, that's a shame. Alex, you know, you know, this goes way back to, you know, Howard Stern, when they discovered that more people yeah. who hated him were listening than people who liked him. It's just this righteous, this bullshit indignation that people want to have. Yeah, but I mean, uh, um, uh, in the case of... Um, in the case of, uh, of, of Woody Allen. Allen, I just think that he it was complete. He's been he they won't <coughs> won't uh, pay to make his movies. The actors won't be in it. All based on baseless on assumptions one. that have been on made. No, based on Mia Farrow's yeah. Frank Sinatra's son, right? <laughs> who, I, who I get from the TV. Yep. Well, yeah. Yeah, hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, man. Absolutely. And do you know that that show is up for an Emmy that they did? Oh, that documentary, oh. that phony doc, that pseudo documentary. Pure oh. feral propaganda. Never ever has anything been proven to the allegations made about Woody Allen, and yet he's had to suffer by the false right. ac accusations. Well, in fact, the opposite, right? It was all thrown out of court. It was thrown out of Yale New Haven Medical Clinic. It was thrown out. They let him. Why would they let Sun Yi and Woody Allen adopt two kids if there was any proof that he was a child molester? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's just, it's unfair. Is it, because it's good for ratings. No, but it's, it's just, not his ratings. <laughs> and and, and it, it is unfair. I mean, and Amazon quit uh, financing his films because of the allegations. You know, I agree. What was it the other day where we saw that somebody was hurting from something like this, and it was completely on allegations? Uh, no, no due process anymore. You know? Huh? Yeah. There's just no such thing as due process in this country. The oh, accusations dude. enough oh, oh, to destroy you. It, it's conviction in the press. It's conviction by innuendo, you know, and uh, who was it? But there was something the other day, somebody the other day who had a big problem. And I said, geez, you know, nothing was ever proven to any of these allegations. I mean, you want to you want to go after Bill Cosby. Go ahead. There was a big court trial. He was found guilty. Yes. All right. Yeah. But, but don't uh, cancel somebody because somebody has accused him of something, you know. Uh, that, that that's that's McCarthyism. Yeah, you know, and, Charlie and, McCarthyism. Charlie <laughs> McCarthyism. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's getting so bad that it's not only even the person accused, right? If you if you if you like the person who's been accused, you can get canceled. Oh, I had that happen to me once in San Francisco. I always tell this story, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing now. But the uh, a gay group came after me. Glad came after me because 
I defended Sam Kinison as not being homophobic. Now, all I did was I defended him. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't homophobic. Nobody accused me of being homophobic. But you didn't take a side. It's because I had Kinison on the show and because I had said to somebody on the program when they asked me, is Sam Kinison homophobic? And I said, absolutely not. You know, that he's just going for anything he can make fun of. And gay seemed like an obvious thing for him to make fun of. And they came with their little little, little committee that looked like a itty bitty <laughs> bitty committee from some kind of movie where they all came in and they sat in the chairs on the opposite side. And I was on the other side with my general manager and my program director and my uh, newswoman, Lori Thompson. And uh, they, they started playing clips of uh, what Kinison did, said in his act. And they were like, just, you know, a clip. There wasn't what went on before the joke or what went on after the joke, which puts the joke in context, okay? And uh, um, uh, it, it, so they came in, they started playing all the stuff. And finally, in the middle of it, I got up and I said, this is ridiculous. You know, you're no worse than, than, than uh, McCarthyism. You're no worse than the Nazis in the way you're acting. And I won't put up with this. And I got him walked out and slammed the door behind me. And I could hear all these gay people going, <gasps> yes, you know, they were gasping. But I wouldn't take that crap. Plus, it's a it's a joke. He's a comedian. You're, you know, if you don't like it, don't as we as Shecky said, don't laugh or don't go see Sam Kennison. I, I don't know. <laughs> he's never been sent to the emergency room because of a joke. Well, you know, I, I put a kibosh on the, I used to have nothing but comedians on my show in San Francisco. Is anybody here from San Francisco who remembers that? No. Um, uh, and I, <laughs> that's interesting because the nighttime show, I got a lot of people who would remember. But anyway, uh, uh, it, 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 I had a lot of comedians on the show and then AIDS hit. And some of them came out and were making like AIDS jokes. And I thought one night I'm watching television and I see somebody with AIDS and he's lying in bed with all these, you know, Car uh, uh, Carposi syndrome uh, marks on his body. And I went, that's not funny. You know, there's nothing funny about that. And I then went in and the next day, every comedian that came in, I said, no AIDS jokes. Okay. It was too soon. No, it wasn't that it was too soon. It, 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 it was never uh, too soon uh, it, because AIDS was killing people. And I said, the only reason you're making a joke about it is because gays are getting it. Okay. And so I don't, I don't, I don't really want anybody to, t I don't like to tell you what you can joke about or not joke about, but on this show, you can't joke about AIDS. And I, I, I have them stop it. That was by the way, prior to getting this committee, this from glad coming to the studios to complain. You know, I had done stuff like that, and, and, and none of them knew my history. And one of the things I said before I walked out was, don't ever go after people who are your friends, and make, because all you're going to do is make them enemies. And that's when I walked out. And, and I think they, we have a tendency to do that in this day and age, is that we make enemies by, by accusing people who are pretty much on your side. An association. Well, yeah. the, the, the Democrats are the best at that. They love to eat their own. Oh, yeah. they 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 have lunch on their own. Yeah, are you it's kidding? Great, me? It's insanity. Yeah. 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 And, the, and the Democrat version of the Cosmopolitan magazine, instead of the sex test, they have the purity tests, and you can go through and determine your level of purity. <laughs> your level on of an purity. issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, what happened to to Al Franken? Although yeah. I think I was talking to Shaggy yesterday, and you and I were talking about the fact that really he shouldn't have quit. And the no. fact that he did makes me he quit too mad. early. Well, he was supposed that, to go before a committee. It may, that's what right. makes me mad about him is that he quit rather than fight it. You know, we keep hmm? we keep letting these suckers get away. Like in that movie, The Chair. If you keep letting these people get away with changing everything because the one guy who's offended determines what's offensive, it just gets worse. You well, you're basically giving every time we give in. But you're giving it's one. It's more fuel to the fire, and, and the, the more ridiculous the indignation gets. What are you giving? 
I don't say shit to me all the time. I don't want to hear. I don't cancel them. I just move on to the next person. Yeah. I don't think Franken should have quit, but I think he read the writing on the wall. They had all turned against him. The same, same like with Cuomo, right? I mean, what's the point of fighting it? You're going to lose with these people. Well, I, I, you know, oh, here's the thing. I know what it was. Uh, Cuomo had his Emmy taken away. Did they really? It was an honorary uh, Emmy they gave him last year for the way he, for COVID. his television performances for COVID, by COVID. They, they took it away from him. Because now this performance and is I'm bad. going, wait a minute. Why are you taking it away? Well, you know, go to look at what he's been. He, tell me one thing he's been charged with. Tell me one thing that's been proven beyond a reasonable, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt. Nothing. You're taking that Emmy away before he's had his day in court. You know, and, and, and everybody goes, oh, bravo for the Emmys. Well, they're like that bully at the school you're talking about, you know. I mean, they, we let them get away with it. And they shouldn't be allowed to. You know, I was thinking. Uh, if, if it, if it, AIDS logic, if you had a show still and there's still comics on there, would you, uh, would you want to limit some of the COVID jokes? Well, COVID jokes don't come under a level of um, of uh, homophobia. There's no, no particular group. That, there's no particular group that gets it. Yeah. Unvaccinated. Yeah, but I'm, <laughs> I make fun of the unvaccinated. Yeah, I mean, it, it, <laughs> the point is, uh, I don't think anybody would make that many. I can't think of many COVID jokes. I wish I had a couple of comedians here and say, "Come on, do you have any COVID jokes?" You know. I mean, there's only one AIDS joke I ever thought was funny, and I and I could allow on the show. The and COVID what? jokes write themselves. I mean, we've got a population taking who who are opposed to putting weird things in their bodies, so they but won't get vaccinated, horse and they hate they hate big pharma, and they're now taking a, a horse dewormer from Merck. <laughs> last I checked, last I checked was bigger pharma, not just big pharma. Uh, I mean, I mean the, the jokes are. The, I mean, come on, <laughs> they, they write themselves. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's too like, easy. That's why nobody's making them. The only gay joke that I ever uh, thought was okay was the following joke. What's the worst thing about having AIDS? <laughs> having to tell your parents you're Haitian. <laughs> so that was the only non-homophobic AIDS joke I heard. It's anti-Haitian. That I would get a bad time for today. But. Absolutely. Well, I, heard, oh, it's I, I, heard, I heard someone say that, you know, it was started by monkeys and they hoped it wasn't Mike because he was the coolest one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello to Len. Len's here and uh, Jeff Stein is here. And of course, like yeah, Mandy. One. Hello, yeah. Mandy. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. It's going good. How's everything down there in Georgia. Good. Yeah. Uh, I was going to interject when you were talking about influencers that my daughter gets free stuff sometimes. She's not, she's definitely not an influencer, but she does get free stuff a lot. For what? Um, because, well, she's got like 15,000 followers on Instagram, but she's just known around like the UGA campus and that. So she just, and she works for a boutique. So she does a lot of advertising for the clothing and she gets free clothes and stuff from companies mm, lucky her yeah, but i think you're you know we tend to confuse influencing with advertising because that's what it's what it is it's advertising 100 mm -hmm. yeah yeah we, we like, do quite a bit of work with it in my company with with hiring influence for projects the only thing i get influencer money for is it depends but that's well, all i was going to say i was going to say that i i i i'm i've just made a deal as an influencer uh, uh for uh like metamucil <laughs> yeah. but we do we product product placement and different programs and things like that i'm working on a project now that's looking to get dozens of influencers to show up with what we're doing yeah it's, and my wife is, is is doing the same thing she's my wife's building a men's mental health or mental wellness app and and and, and one of the marketing strategies is to get influencers to to be part of that as well it's the younger ones advertising products and things like that is one thing, but telling people how to live their life. Oh yeah. Or whatever. There's a lot of them that are that age that have stepped into that arena. And I think that's a very different thing. Hmm. But she has to do a post. Like she has a certain time limit that she'll have to do a post about whatever product they've sent her. Like if they've sent yes. her 
a shirt or, you know, like a shirt and she'll have to like tag them and, you know, say, you know, just have a cute picture in the thing. Wow, you do it on Instagram? Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah, so she just takes and a picture. lot of them have made a lot of money. Oh, yeah. She doesn't make money. She doesn't make cash, unfortunately. <laughs> she just gets free stuff. But that means okay. she doesn't have to go buy it. I, I fight every day to get YouTube viewers. Uh, and, you know, maybe I get a couple hundred people to watch a, a given show. Maybe maybe a half, a, half, a, half a thousand, something like that. Uh, but then I see that some woman, some 16 year old girl <laughs> who is, uh, quote, an influencer who gives makeup tips <laughs> is gets 4 million hits <laughs> and gets money for that. Now yeah. I make about, I make about a hundred dollars every three months from, from YouTube. Okay. You're getting about two to 300 people a day. All right. Imagine what she gets. Yeah. <laughs> Last year I was walking around Union Square and you know, Sephora, you know, started selling yeah. Stuff yeah, and stuff. Of course. there were lines like three times around the square. And I asked what's going on. And it was some 17 year old influencer who was telling people what makeup to buy. Yeah. Was she live inside the store? She was live inside the store. Ah. So thrilled. My God, yeah. damn it. The worst ones are the ones that just uh, open up boxes. Okay. That's all they do is open up boxes and they oh, get yeah. millions of viewers. Yeah, yeah the like, un unboxing the videos. The Gene yeah. Hall. I should, the I, should, I should do that on. They get on paid. The for that. I should. I should. That's my that. dream. My dream is to be an unboxer of. of I should start an unboxing <laughs> channel where, like, <laughs> I I I unbox tampons. <laughs> <laughs> That should be Paul Simon's next song, The Unboxer. Uh, no, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's kind of, it's major. She's majoring in fashion management, you know, marketing, buying. So it's kind of in the realm of her, you know, what she wants to do for a career. So that's good. Yeah. Okay, good. But, you know, I mean, I just, I don't understand it. This girl gives makeup tips. I know. She gets, <laughs> she's the she number one. To do their she gets more viewers than anybody. All right. And she makes a couple million at the same time. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has probably several million subscribers. I was watching a, a YouTube video with, uh, with uh, 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 Al Franken and Al Franken, who we all know and probably Love. Here, uh, to a certain extent, we just talked about earlier. Uh, was talking about how he had got this plaque because he had a hundred thousand subscribers. She's got to have plaques used <laughs> all of the walls for tiling. You know, every time they send her one for every hundred thousand. I mean, it's, it's it's ridiculous that Al Franken only gets a hundred thousand, but you know, Susie Cream Cheese or whatever her name is. <laughs> you know, what's uh, got into her? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> gets gets how many how many millions you know i mean just uh, I, I may be wrong on the number of millions it may have been something like 20 million but you know alex it, has has twitch hit your radar do you know what twitch is well twitch is a game thing well a game and it's yeah it's a it's a thing where people are are, are, are broadcasting out there what's going on in their living room essentially mm -hmm. much of it is video games well the money the money in that is unbelievable. Well, you know something? I got to tell you, I, I play video games. I don't, I don't know. Don't ask me why. And there's certain ones. I don't, I, I'm, I'm for the kind of adventure first shooter games. You know, uh, I, I don't, uh, like, I like The Last of Us and the Tomb Raider stuff <laughs> and uh, the Nathan Drake stuff that they do. Uh, those I love. And I will sit here and watch somebody play those games. Well, then you're part of the problem, Bennett. You can get it. <laughs> my wife and I, so my wife and I went to Vancouver with our granddaughter and all that. We came home. When we came home, we needed a couple months to kind of decompress mm -hmm. before we got back to our, our regular activities. And we, we set up in our living room just sort of for a psychological experiment. We played this little Nintendo game. It was a harmless game called animal crossing and my wife and i would play it. we oh. both have personality you would kill it on twitch alex if you decided to do that we made oh, I, I don't know a thousand bucks we made like a thousand bucks doing it um and had some fun playing this game and alex if you decided to do that and you got good at talking while playing mm -hmm. you would get a 
crazy Twitch audience. You'd be known as the old guy who plays Far Cry or whatever it is. <laughs> That's a dream come true, Alex. You're, 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 yes, your next chapter. Your Mandy, next chapter. Mandy's got her hand up. Yes, Mandy. Now, I was just saying that my older daughter, who's a doctorate student in anthropology, and she, wow. she plays Crossing. What? <laughs> like, what? I, I don't know what it is about that game, but it's, oh, it's, thing. it's there. What's it's it so called? An it's called Animal, Animal Crossing. Crossing. Yep. Yeah. Uh-oh. What do you mean, uh-oh? Uh -oh. You know what I mean, uh -oh. It might not be my kind of game. It won't <laughs> be your kind of game, buddy. It won't be. Marjorie comes in every now and then and goes, boy, the video looks so real. It's, it's incredible where it is yeah. today. Yeah. Some of them are, I mean, the people who did The Last of Us uh, did a, a game that just looks incredible. Just incredible. Um, but anyway, you know. Uh, but hey, so so I mean you I these guys, this one this is one guy the Rad Brad is his name, and he plays a lot of games all the time. And like for instance, if you take The Last of Us, each of those episodes of him playing it, there are about fifty of them because it's a very long game. And each one he's got at least you can see the number a half a million people. Well, by the time he's through with that fifty episodes. He's got 25 million people. The money he's making, he's probably buying a mansion wherever he lives. I mean, it, 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 he's making a fortune off of it. And you wonder why the country's going to hell. <laughs> well, here's, the move. here's the move, because there's the, the Twitch money and the YouTube money. So what that guy maybe has done, I don't know about that guy in particular, but what many of them do is they get an expert YouTuber. And they say, okay, you can have all the YouTube money. And that person's entire job is to sift through those episodes that have all those hours, yeah. pull out clips, put them up on YouTube and market the actual show to feed the show. He makes all that money on the show. The YouTuber makes all that YouTube money and they're literally feeding themselves and marketing themselves. So I should go on Twitch as the old guy playing Pac-Man? Is that what we're saying? <laughs> the problem do is, though, you would get canceled it. very quickly. That's the only problem with that scenario is that you would get canceled. I would get what? You'd get canceled. Nobody canceled Man, me. I go on there and play Pong. Why would I get canceled? <laughs> well, because you would be you, who we all know and love. Yeah. And the, and the early 20s... Uh, would would be woke and uh they would very quickly find offense in some of the things that you're you're saying even though right. they, they'd watch they'd watch one of these shows find the yep. clip and you'd be done 100 <laughs> percent. they the haven't canceled like me it, the only thing i like you about mean this if i was playing tomb raider i couldn't say man look at those tits <laughs> That's it, you, <laughs> you know that wouldn't that wouldn't play well huh you'd probably be on the line at that point yeah yeah. The only thing Alex, is, the Alex only thing I like follows about a guy. He follows a guy that has done all the maneuvers that Alex can't do. It's so if I, I, I follow the game, and, and, I, and if I get to a point where I, I just can't get through something because it, it, it's eluding me, I'll mm -hmm. go and watch the episode where he's at that place wow. and see how he did it. I still have mm -hmm. to go do it. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm cheating. It's not cheating. It's just that I, I, there's an easier way to do it and a bad way to do it. You know, there would be a following for you of people who get to celebrate when you finally get through some of these places and your reactions to that. Yeah, well, these people get through the whole game. I, most of these games, I wind up at a certain part of this game I just can't get past, even though I watched the guy do it. I just can't get past it. I mean, it's just relentless. You know, Still playing Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> <laughs> that game was fabulous, man. I love it. <laughs> I love this call. This is like one of the favorite times of my week. That's fantastic. I did not think I'd be thinking of Leisure Suit Larry this week. <laughs> The best thing about this whole conversation. You, you may not, you may, may find this hard to believe, but I never played Larry Leisure Suit, Leisure Suit Larry. No, because you were too busy living it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my first game, my first game that I ever played uh, that was an actual game was, was Tomb Raider. Um, and I guess it was something in the ability to manipulate a woman that appealed to me. <laughs> 
You still use a woman as your main character. Have you changed your pronouns? Actually, actually, in most of the games today, a lot of the games today, the, the main character is a woman. In, in The Last of Us, all of them are women. There's even a lesbian scene in The Last of Us 2. And there's an actual, the actual nudity and sex scene in The Last of Us 2. Ew, just... What? <laughs> Video it's, not, it's, not, it's not hardcore. You don't see insertion and things like that, but you do see bare breasts. You see the guy on top of her kissing her, and then it goes to black. But it's the first time I've ever seen that in a video game. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't porn or anything. They didn't get to that. Damn. It. How do you say that with the sound of disappointment, Owen? Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. But there is, there is a sex scene in the in in it i mean like you get in a movie you know where all of a sudden they get romantic and there's the obligatory sex scene going on but and the waves crashing on the shore <laughs> or oh, the train going through they the tunnel the that's the other <laughs> metaphor yeah. i mean I, hitchcock the greatest thing he ever did end of north by northwest is carrie grant kisses eva marie saint and then there's a shot of a train going through a tunnel <laughs> <laughs> and then he pulls her up Right. And then he's like, got the fireworks. Well, he pulls her up, but the last scene is actually the train going through the tunnel. And, and they always say, they say that was a metaphor for sex in movies, you know, in those days. Couldn't do that sort of thing. Um, so anyway, uh, so what else is going on? Uh, we got the Afghanistan thing. Uh, and, and the only thing I got to say is I was talking to Shecky about this yesterday because he and I had private conversations that you're not privy to. Uh, <laughs> we should put one of our, I think we should put one of our calls on Zoom just so that <laughs> it's, it's, it's an hour of wandering in all different directions. But uh, we, I was talking yesterday about the thing about Afghanistan is how many people were killed, how many soldiers were killed? 13? Okay. 13 America, yeah. heroes, 13 Thir heroes, Tom. 13 heroes, yeah. Uh, uh, people who were pressed into service sent someplace they didn't want to go and they're heroes. But the point is this, that it, it, the networks and the people of America don't have any sense of, of, of you know, perception of what's dangerous and not dangerous. The Afghanistan thing was getting 24-7 coverage, okay, because 13 people died. And in at least the day that those 13 people died, I think a hundred, uh, I think a thousand died here in America of COVID. Yeah. And we just go, oh boy, well, that's another day. Yep. yep, yep, yep. Well, I mean, come on, 13 versus a thousand, which is the story. And the one that's, that's a thousand is the one that affects you the most because yep. you could get it, you know. I don't think you're going to get an Afghani coming to your house and burning it to the ground, you know? So I, I it, am I wrong or am I right on this? No, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And this is where the conspiracy theorists, uh, you know, get followers and merit because we've been lied to so many times and we've been directed to look at this. It's like a magician with the, the art of misdirection, right? They know no, it's the old shiny coin. Or yeah. pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. people yeah. every. Yeah. You know, I said to Alex yesterday, all the Americans that were still in Afghanistan, they weren't there to go to the beaches. Right, they weren't there for the. Uh, for, uh, I came. What was it? What was it from uh, uh, Casablanca? I came here for the water. I came here for the waters. Yeah, well, there's no water here. <laughs> well, I was misinformed I was or misinformed. something like that. Right. That's so Speaking of water, did you hear California is going to stop cantaloupe watering because they're running out of water? No more cantaloupes, folks. Well, well, Larry Elder will solve that. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, when Larry Elder's coming or but Mandy, Mandy, you were saying something? Oh, I just said, and forget the fact that people were servicemen were servicemen and women or, you know, probably contractors too and everything were dying over there every day for the yeah. last however many years and nobody cared well yeah but the contractors were there to make money for themselves not the soldiers still do you know how many do you know how many troops died in afghanistan over the that 20 years how many how many 
About 3,000, I believe. Uh, you're under that, 2,500. You know? yeah. yeah. So if you compare that again to COVID, mm -hmm. I mean, you got to compare it to COVID. It, it, it's what if, news has got to be what affects you. Like, I got to be. It doesn't COVID. compare to COVID. It doesn't even close. It's a blowout. <clears throat> yeah. yeah 20, what is it, something like 20 times that have died in Florida alone from COVID. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? I hate to say this. I hate to say a lot of those people that died are old. And nobody cares about old people. Yeah, you're, yeah you're right. In fact, oh, Marjorie, Marjorie and I were going to start a new show here on Gabnet called Nobody Cares About Old People. No, I'll meet <laughs> you at the tuna. No, no. I was going to watch that show, but I didn't care about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I do. My newest, my newest thing. I'm going to do another audio biography, and it's going to be called "I'll Meet You at the Tuna." I meet you with a salmon, and then the subtitle on that is "Where My Life Wound Up." <laughs> and, and what it refers to is Marjorie, every time we go over to Costco, doesn't want to go down the rows with me. She immediately says to me, I'll meet you at the salmon. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> I know what that means. I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, but now it makes sense, right? Yeah. I'll meet you at the hey, salmon. So Costco, I was Costco 23 years. I was in the marketing department. Yeah. Done on purpose. When you walk into that place, when it first opened, the first thing you used to see were tires because the tires used to be in the building. Oh, we don't and have tires. Electronics. Now it's just electronics. Yeah, right. so and that's where Alex spends the most. The first of thing you see in our Costco is is the electronics. The and that's, that's, but there's that's not the, many that's, electronics that's there anymore. Well, no, but the parade of TV sets. TV, yeah. all the TVs, yeah. yeah. And then, but and you, then, you, got, then you got those things with the with the with iPhones them. and the iPads and the iPads. And now it has to stop and check everything. So that's one hundred percent on purpose. I can tell you that that place was meticulously merchandised. Okay. I'm and not I'm not in the market for a TV set. So why am I looking at them and checking the prices? <laughs> why? They're nice to look at, right? Yep. Yeah, I can't figure that one out. You can't pick it up. You can't put it in your black car to take home because they're too large. They they give yes. you the box. Uh, did I check? I, I think I took one of my TV sets home from there. I, I, I ordered up a bigger car to take me home. But uh, if I'm going to order, I, the problem is I ordered one once from Amazon and it came broken. And then I had to pay, go through hell to send it back. Well, mine came from Amazon, but I had that white glove set up which they used to do 10 years ago. Yeah. Where the guy put brings it in, he orients it, he turns it on, makes sure it works. Yeah. Hooks in the cable and, you know. Mine was, okay. the, mine was the black glove service. And they made sure that when you got it, it was- <laughs> Believe broken. it in the lobby. <laughs> Remember when we got that, Marjorie? Had a big crack in the side of it. Um, you know. So, but, but at least if I go to Costco and I buy it, I know it probably is not going to have that problem. Although you don't open up the box there, so you don't know whether it's in good yeah. or not. But if worse comes to worse, I just get another car to take me back with it and say- Yeah, but with Amazon, open. you can just drop it off at UPS or yeah. have UPS pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Amazon yeah. will come get it. Yeah. 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 But what did I do? You know what I did? I went online- and I said, the hell with it. I'm not ordering this again from Amazon. Okay. So I went online and bought the same TV set at Best Buy and they delivered it the next day with white glove service. Guys came in, unboxed it. We did a show. I say unboxed. Ah, <laughs> and then, <laughs> then we, uh, you know. Uh, and, yeah, but they've gotten rid of that service. All the places have pretty much. No, I think Best Buy, you can still ask for it. You have to pay for it. Pay for yeah, it. up Look. here in Canada, we've got the Geek Squad. They have a Geek Squad down there? Yeah. 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 I'm curious how long that name's going to last, by the way. I believe that the Geek Squad's going to be uh, PC'd up here pretty quick. Why, Geek's bad? The carny term. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. The yeah. Geek is the carny who bites the head off a chicken. Right. Yeah. Bites the heads off chickens, the Geek. Yeah. 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 They're quite yeah. tasty, but... <laughs> How's everything in your part of the word, world, Scott and Charlie? Both of them are side by side, at least on my screen here. Yeah. Uh, and they're both in Texas right now. It's fine. Everything's fine. 
Yeah. yeah. Are people <laughs> dying like crazy down there? Oh, yeah. They, you know, they bring down the refrigerator trucks again, so. Oh, right. Hey. Yeah. That's terrific. Texas is losing uh, close to 300 people a day. Jesus. Really? And the <laughs> governor doesn't feel guilty about that? No. Oh. He's trying, probably trying to get elected president or vice president. I wanted to go to the graphics guy and get these big clings that say cannibals keep off and go by and stick it on the trucks. <laughs> cannibals keep off. <laughs> you get a little news. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the, the governor in uh, Florida, just insane. He's, well, you know, he's running for president. The, yeah. the court in Florida voted, uh, said that that's illegal. He can't do that to hold their their salary and uh, oversee that they don't have to wear masks. No, no, they're, they're saying the governor can't do what he's doing. But Exactly. But 70% of Floridians want him as the candidate for president. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they want him out of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. That was an old joke from some guy's act about how this guy ran for uh, ran for Senate, and the reason we voted for him was to get him out of our town. You know, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Charlie. Um, but I mean, I and and then the, in California, do we have anybody from California? We don't have anybody from California. Glenn, oh, he's gone. Glenn, Glenn. we have an empty chair from California. Glenn, yeah. Uh, uh, you got that. You got Larry Elder. You know, uh, who uh, is, is just a, an absolute unmitigated asshole. You know, and 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 these Republicans go, "Oh, we love Larry Elder. We love Larry. Elder. Yeah, you love the guy. He he what? He he uh, pointed a gun at his girlfriend uh, when she did. Well, that was to show that he loved her. That's right." <laughs> Uh, while, it, while he was high on pot, it that was was, it was his love gun. Well, pot is legal in California. Yeah, it wasn't then. <laughs> it wasn't then. In my experience, that's some bad pot. Well, my 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 point is, why do Republicans who hold up these high moral values always vote for people like Donald Trump who have no moral values? Because they're hypocritical scumbag fuckheads. I yeah. mean, it, it, shouldn't yeah. have, it shouldn't have been enough for the entire uh, uh, religious right to vacate Donald Trump the minute he said, you know, I, you can go over and pat him on the pussy. You know, I mean, after that, guns and abortion. Yeah, it, 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 absolutely. They, they, you know, I got this guy Phil who calls the night show, and he and he goes, "Well, I'm voting for uh, for uh, Elder because uh, he's uh, for uh, for for guns." And I would, yeah, but if he's against this and he's against this and he's against this, and these are things you're probably for, are you just going to vote for him because he's okay on one issue? Are you going to vote for a guy just because he's for gun control, uh, for uh, against gun control? That's uh, where Trump's logic, though, because what you just said is bang on for a logical person. But the moment they get emotional about something, guns, abortion, or whatever, they will throw the baby out with the bathwater, and they will just vote on that one issue. Isn't throwing the baby out with the bathwater abortion? I'm not sure. About that. Uh, I set it up, you knock it down. Yeah. Well, that's going to be an interesting argument for people to now make since with all this mask stuff and my freedoms, my body, my choice, the vaccination. Yeah. Your I mean, you can't get an abortion, but it's my body, my choice. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like they don't even, it's like the, the irony escapes them. Well, so they what? say, they say with the, I don't want to get a vaccination. You can't tell me what to do with my body. Mm -hmm. Well, that, but then, you know, I have to have the baby because I can't get an abortion. Right. You can't tell me what to do with my body. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't these same people, they stop at red lights, don't they? I mean, they, yeah. they want to tell people to do shit. It's a lot. We have they laws. turn on their headlights when it's dark out. Right. They, most of them wear seatbelts. I don't, you know, it's crazy. 
Well, what's funny is that all these people that come down with COVID were people who went, I don't want this, the, these, I don't want to make these, in, uh, these companies rich, you know, these drug companies rich, and I don't want their poison in my bodies. And the minute they're lying there in bed with COVID, they're having stuff pumped into them, yeah. that they're glad is being pumped into them, that is just as bad as it, it's worse than any vaccination you would get, you know? No atheists in foxholes. <laughs> that's where most atheists are in foxholes if there was a god i wouldn't be here <laughs> but I, I i wonder how many of them start to think universal health care is a good thing when they get the million dollar bill for the ventilator yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's ridiculous it's just ridiculous you know um, but again then we've got a supreme court justice Stephen Breyer, or Breyer, who won't resign at 83 when if the Republicans take over the Senate and the House, we're going to have a seven to two margin yeah. of service. Well, he, for this weekend, uh, an interview with him, he is planning to retire. Well, he's kind of being coy about it. He should do it now. Yeah. Well, Bader Ginsburg should have done it. When Obama took Bader Ginsburg to lunch and said, do it. She said no. Yeah. Well, in his defense, the Republicans wasn't going to, they controlled the Senate and they weren't going to. Uh, confirm anybody anyway well they were going to confirm it in uh, in uh, obama's last year in office because in the last year of office you can't do that well there's no rule but, that you can't well, you can do that only if you're a democrat you can't do it, yeah, well, it, 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 it i mean they shoved through that guy in december or right. november when trump was out in january right sure it was, it was, uh, the woman yeah, and, and one better better. woman, Ginsburg. Yeah. She wasn't even buried oh, yet. What are the new rules Amy you Barrett, can... Is her name? Was it Amy Conan Barrett? Amy Barrett. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And the new rules Amy is you Rilla can't. Barrett. Yeah. You can't. You can't nominate if it's within the last uh, three years and eleven months of your administration. <laughs> if you're a Democrat. <laughs> if you're a Democrat. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what they pulled on Trump uh, on uh, Obama. Yeah. No, yeah, and, sure. and but if Ginsburg, if Ginsburg had re re resigned, retired when Obama asked her to, then he would have been able to appoint somebody. Was that in the first term? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. And, and she was old enough that she could say to herself, I think honestly, well, why spend the rest of my life, I, what few years I have left doing this? You know? We need, we need term limits on that job. Well, yeah. of course we yeah. need term limits. Yeah. I mean, and they could be. What what does somebody suggest? It was every year, every two years, every every ten years or something to stagger them. Yeah, you stagger them. Yeah, so that no one president might have the chance to exactly you know, pack the court. Of course, you can unpack the court by simply saying, "Well, like, we're going to put in two more justices." Uh, you no, know, Jeff, you got to turn on your mic, Jeff. Turn on your mic. Turn on your mic. There I'm we on now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm really pissed about that. We have too many senators, too many congressmen. <laughs> I'd like to get half of them out. Yeah. 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 I, it's just it's just too many people, and nobody can really make a decision about anything. Well, and they're in for too long. They yeah, need forever. Spoke. Spoke. Let's go to authoritarianism. It'll be easier. <laughs> Well, I, I think is a, a way of at least cutting down senators a little bit was if you take uh, North and South Dakota mm -hmm. and make them one state, because <laughs> even if you made them one state, their population would be the, one of the smallest states in the union. Yeah. And just mm -hmm. do that's one way of getting rid of two senators. Well, North Dakota yeah. gets as much representation as California in the Senate. I mean, it's absurd. But only one Congress. state. Yeah. Well, the representational uh, arm of the government is the Congress. Okay, is the House of Representatives. <laughs> you know, uh, but yeah, but look how they redistrict it, right. where it's a, it's almost a jigsaw puzzle, whether it's the Democrats or Republicans to make sure they don't lose their job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but gerrymandering is terrible. Yeah, we need to merge Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana into one state yeah. too. Yep. Yeah, we'll just call it Wackoville. <laughs> I, noticed, I, noticed that, I noticed that Mandy, who lives in Georgia, which is not of the coolest state in the country, is putting a sweater on. It's not really a sweater. It's very thin, but there's times when it gets cold in this office. And it oh, I really see. Okay. 
right. I got my door sure. shut. Leave the air conditioning very low here because it's 90 something degrees outside. Well, it's not really cold all that hot today, but it gets hot here. Yeah. But, you know, again, yeah. just get back to politics for one quick second. Herschel Walker is running for senator from Georgia. Oh, God. Uh, he lives in Texas. <laughs> Which Trump's endorsed him. <laughs> what? Trump's already endorsed him, yeah. Trump's already endorsed him. Mm. Who's endorsed him? Trump. Donald Trump. He played oh, football for Trump. He didn't get to run here. He didn't even live here. Yeah. I, I don't care if he went to UGA. Yeah. I don't even think he graduated. <laughs> Did he go to he the go to University of Georgia? Yes, he played on yeah. Georgia. He played on he was a Georgia trophy Georgia winner, wasn't he? Was he was the only team. Georgia won the national championship. He was winning. Yeah. Yeah, he was a Georgia football player. Yeah, his team beat my team in the high school championship. So at even, one point he pulled the gun on his wife, well, et cetera, tried to kill her, you know, all that fun stuff that goes well, he's, he's a he's a he's a, a, a perfect Republican. Uh, he's a shoe in to win if he pulled a gun on somebody. Yeah. Well, listen. He, At least he didn't kneel. But he had the right to pull that gun. <laughs> okay? He had the right to pull that gun. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, but he lives in Texas, but he's running in Georgia. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> I have a lot of Facebook friends that are all excited about it because they're like, you know, sit and spin, libs. You know, they just think it's a shoe in He's going to win. I'm just like, okay. What, has, what is happening to this country? I don't know. Shit. Has all 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 sense of of right and wrong left it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I I'm sorry. You know. I I guess I still I I was taught certain things in school, and maybe it was old fashioned. Right. People yeah. aren't taught those things anymore. It's yeah. But I was, I was taught about fairness and honesty and the kind of person. You, you want as a president, the kind of person you don't want to be a president. And I mean, when I was growing up, a guy like Trump couldn't even get to first base. Yeah, but as I always say, he was on the TV. Yeah. But in, in, in my, no, he just grabbed his way to third base. When I was growing up, we did have the House and American Activities Subcommittee and McCarthy. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you think things are bad now, they were kind of weird well, back then too well we said yesterday we were talking about bobby kennedy right i was gonna ask you know who was that. sitting next to joe mccarthy and um what's his name you um, know right Cohn. he's on one side of mccarthy and roy Cohn is on the other he was side. A staffer. Right. but if bobby I, kennedy become president this country would be in the greatest shape in its history right but well, in wait, all in all honesty bobby kennedy was sitting on the oh he was on the right hand side of <laughs> McCarthy and 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 uh, Cohen was on the left hand side, but yeah. he, he he evolved well beyond. Oh, he, he evolved did, into what? But he he evolved into what it was ever politically expedient, Steve. And then evolved. ran on his dead brother's memory. I mean, you know, to a certain extent, I you know, I, he would have been a lot better than Nixon. Yes. Oh, no argument there. Said, but out of, come on. Um, Hey, listen, I don't, was, his, I, don't, don't think his, I don't think his assassin should get parole. No. Yes, but the Kennedy family thinks he should. No. no two only the only nine Robert children. Jr. and one two of the nine children. And one is Robert Kennedy Jr., the biggest uh, wacko in New York. Yes, State. Total, total wacko. No, seven <laughs> of the Kennedys wrote a letter saying absolutely There's seven of them. not. Yeah. Um, Mike? Well, you're just your question about the country going where it is and all that. And I, I see it around the world. I think personally, Right now, we are uh, seeing the results of when governments put one over, lie to their to their people, and I think we're seeing the results of that now. The distrust, and we're seeing the results of of people becoming so um, to the point of conspiracy. Never mind distrusting, but to the point of we're expecting to be lied to. We're expecting there to be some greater yeah. thing, the actual truth. You know, if you go back to Vietnam all the way up to now, you're seeing, I think the stones are, are being laid. And the only way to fix this is to have governments who will not lie to their people. That's my personal opinion. Well, it ain't going to ever happen. Right, it's not going to happen. The FDR administration lied to everyone during World War II. Mm. Hey, listen, the big lie was that he could walk. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. I mean, yeah. that, that one was perpetuated from Never mind one. about Pearl Harbor or anything like that, like... Like, I mean, yeah, we I, knew about Pearl Harbor at least a week before it happened. There you go. Yeah. 
Mm. But, yeah. You know, you talked about learning about fairness and honesty. And today, you know, fairness and honesty is for losers. Yeah. That's, mm -hmm. that's the opinion, right? You know, yeah. you yeah, having the president of Afghanistan or prime minister, whatever he was, somehow get onto a helicopter with $160 million. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, he got As on he's it bugging because, out of no, I got on, on it with $160 million because he had luggage. <laughs> yeah. But at least he paid the luggage fees. <laughs> he could put them. I got some excess luggage here. What is that? Fifty dollars a bag. You're gonna have to store it in the uh, uh, bag, in the compartment up above. Anyway, <laughs> hey, listen, Jackie. Thank you. Thank you to Mike Chisholm and to Andrew Deutsch and to Steve Bender and to Edward Berger. That's to right. Scott Modiker and to Charlie Wallace and to Hold Mindy up. and to Len and to Jeff Stein and to Marjorie mm. Miller. We have more people on this panel than are watching the show right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a lot of people that then watch this show more than any other show I do after the fact. Yeah. Well, it's at four o'clock in the afternoon. They're busy. Yeah. 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 They're all they're all members of the Ed Burger fan club. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> uh, Edward, why. sign us off by saying that's all, folks. That's yeah. all, folks. <laughs> Bye. Okay. Everybody, that's our panel for today. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.